Please be seated. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I know that you have all registered in your minds that today is Father's Day. There is no liturgical day in the church named Father's Day. It is Trinity Sunday. In all my years of ministry, I've never preached a Father's Day sermon. I have preached one or two Mother's Day sermons. I find that I'm at least led this morning to talk about the Trinity parenting. How in the world are we going to get there from here? Both fatherhood and trinity are as confusing to me as are a lot of things. I've been a father for, I guess, almost 27 years, and I've yet to figure it out. I've been at least trying to be a theologian for more than that, and I've not been able to figure out the Trinity. As a matter of fact, I know less now about fathering and the Trinity than I did when I first started. Before I became a father, I knew what good parenthood was. I'd read the books in pastoral care and the second class in pastoral care. And so I knew all the do's and don'ts. I also knew what the Trinity was. I had read the early church fathers, and then through the Reformation, the Trinity discussion by John Calvin, and then later on, a neo-Orthodox explanation of the Trinity. I knew all of the heresies, and I can tell you, knowing about something and knowing it are two different things. Ideas are great until you put them into practice. I thought I might just give you a couple of pithy little quotes to celebrate the Father's Day aspect of this day. I like the one by Mark Twain who says, By the time a man realizes his father was right, He then has a son who thinks he's wrong. When I asked the difference between Father's Day and Mother's Day, a five-year-old child said, well, it is just like Mother's Day, but you don't have to spend as much. And Robert Frost. Boy, this, this truth is so universal. A father is always a Republican towards his son, and his mother is always a Democrat. And if you invoke that, a father is always a Democrat to his daughters, and the mother is a Republican. A few weeks ago, I did wedding here in this sanctuary. For a person, for a family I've known for about 20 years. I knew the father fairly well. Outdoorsman, ranches. I think he's been to Africa on safari. I'm mean, a tough man. A Hemingway kind of fellow. And as they came forward, he walked his daughter down, and I was standing here on the first step. And I went through the liturgy of marriage, and we finally got to the question. And I said to him, Bill, I'm getting ready to ask you the hardest question you will ever have to answer. I answered it in October of last year, and I will answer it again in February. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? No one 
saw it. There were tears in this fellow's eyes. And he croaked out the words, her mother and I. And he sat down. Fathers who give away their daughters in marriage die a little bit each time. We are Democrats to our daughters. All the books on parenting, all the how to do this, what not to do, and how to do it, can never make up for the lack of love. Well, they may give us practical ways of expressing that love, and we fathers need practical ways of showing that we care. But they cannot create that which is not there. And somehow, we in the Christian church intuit that the best handbook on fathering or parenting in the scripture, but sadly, the scriptures don't have a special chapter on how to do it. It is not a handbook on parenting. And I wondered as I mulled Trinity Sunday and Father's Day over, maybe and perhaps there is something of parenting that can arise from our understanding of Trinitarian formula. It's a difficult thing to understand or attempt to understand the Trinity. If there's three in one and one in three. Judaism calls us polytheistic, as would Islam, saying that that is an impossibility you worship three gods, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And yet we say, no, we have one God. And Christians have tried so hard to define the Trinity. And at each point they have failed. Some have used the explanation, and I suspect many of you would try if you were to articulate a Trinitarian formula. Well, it's like three characteristics of one individual. Sort of like the sun. The sun is round, the sun is bright, and the sun is hot. But all three of those characteristics are one, one sun. That is heresy. I know that it's a favorite one of many of us. It's called Sabellianism. It has been declared heresy for literally centuries. It creates a kind of God schizophrenia. God is like this over here, then God is like this, and then God is like that. So we tried other methods. We tried to keep the unity of God. It's called mobilism. God is actually the Father and is out creating. And then, when the incarnation comes, God is the Son, Jesus. And then, when Jesus leaves, God becomes the Holy Spirit. The question that was raised in all of this, when God is Jesus, who is Jesus praying to? Himself? Who's minding the store when Jesus here is, is here on earth? How many of you have ever, I, and I know this is true because some of you have said this to me, okay? You know, that God in the Old Testament seems to be a different God than in the New Testament. 
You ever read the Old Testament? The God in the Old Testament can't wait to destroy the bad people. As a matter of fact, plays favorites, bigoted, doesn't like Gentiles. Go down and kill every one of them, babies included. And don't forget to kill the cattle and the chickens. And then you get to the New Testament, and it seems to be an entirely different, loving, humane God. So, Donatism said, really, we don't even need the Old Testament. Let's stop it. That's a different God altogether, and here we have the New Testament. That's who we follow. Heresy. We in the Reformed faith say, central affirmation, God does not change. God is and was and ever shall be the same. We have a problem in the rise of feminism. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not a chauvinist pig. I had a problem with the Trinitarian formula, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because two parts of that formula are masculine. And so we opted out. It seemed the feminists would like us to say, Creator... Redeemer and Sustainer. That sounds good. Sounds fair. But there is a problem. I have a young man that comes out of the church when he's here. And I may have said this to you before. He comes out because he heard one time in a sermon, I didn't like people calling me preacher. So every time he sees me, he goes, Preacher? Let's we'll make my blood crawl. I mean, preacher? But am I not more than preacher? Am I not also a father? Sometimes I do other different things. And that's the problem with trying to change the Trinitarian formula. You've made the father only the creator. You made the Son only the Redeemer, but what about all the stuff He taught? You made the Holy Spirit the Sustainer. In other words, it's a utilitarian definition that we give. Whatever you can produce is what you are. And that must be rejected. For God is more than jobs. Now how in the heck am I going to connect Trinitarian formula with Father's Day. Names are important. What's in a name? Well, John, Johnny Cash sings a song about a boy named Sue. And his boy named Sue has to fight. He gave him that name, according to the father, so he'd be tough. And he was. Our names reveal something about ourselves. The earliest name for God was El. The Hebrew word El, or Elohim. And that, when you read your Old Testament, and you read the word God, G-O-D, that's the use of Elohim. But when Moses climbed up Mount Sinai and saw the burning bush and God revealed God's self to Moses, Moses asked the question, what shall I tell those Pharaoh, that Pharaoh in Egypt, who God, what God is sending me? And he said, I am. Tell them I am sent me, which the Hebrew is Yahweh. Now, for the Jew, that name is so sacred, that revealed name of God, Yahweh, you can never say it. You must say Adonai, which means Lord. Now, when you read in your Old Testament, it doesn't say God. It says the Lord says. That is the term Yahweh and or, as if you would read it in Hebrew, the Jewish person would say, Adonai, the Lord. Now, 
Jews' perspective of God was God was great, high, and lifted up. In a sense, you can almost catch the, the chasm between God and God's people. God ruled from on high. Even in the tabernacle, the holy of holies was protected by a great curtain. And when Jesus says, Ego ami, in Greek, or in Hebrew, Yahweh, I am the truth and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the vine of the branches. You can begin to understand why he was crucified, because he was radically changing the definition of religion forever. Jesus had the gall to call God Father. There is not one place in the Old Testament that God is referred to as Father. You see, that implies that there is a personal relationship with this God. Father. One time, Jesus called him Abba, which means Daddy. A term of endearment. So, really, the Trinity emerges from a perspective that is radically changed when Jesus calls God Father. And then says, the Father and I are one. And then I will lead to you the Counselor, the Holy Spirit. In essence, what Jesus does instead of defining God as high and lifted up far away and so holy that we can't even lift our face, he shows us the way that God is present all around. Yes, God is creator. And mothers and fathers certainly bring forth life together as creators. But anyone, almost anyone, can be a mother or a father, but it takes someone special to be a daddy or a mommy. There's a German word that is a, a very complex German word that defines this paradigm shift in religion. Das ein. Das ein. Being there. The definition that Jesus brings to bear and the paradigm shift in Christianity is God is there. He is being there. He was there at creation. He is there in the presence of the Son, and He is there in our lives, yours, right now and today. So I will make this transition from Trinitarian formula, thus I, to our parenting formula of being there. We fight a culture. And it's very difficult in American culture that does not recognize the sign being there by the parents. And we know that we are pulled in so many directions. Our work takes us everywhere. We, I'm afraid sometimes we think that we can be the parent for our children by buying their souls instead of being there for their souls. Jesus' last word, Lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. mark of a parent is 
outside. Being there. And the happiness of a child in their heart breaks. In their successes and in their losses and in that strange lane a land in which we try to say, even in our losses, we can learn. Good parenting being there to create possibilities for them. Redeem their failures. Sustain them with your love and comfort. I think the hardest thing for me as a father is that I can't be there now. I remember the days that I dropped the first one out in a West Texas plane to go to a university. And I remember that moment of starting the car to drive away, to look back out of the rearview mirror and see your child not knowing where they were going, not knowing anyone. And a small part of me died. Then in two years, I got to do the same thing over. And I think that every time we say goodbye to our children and we know physically we cannot be there, we are wounded. Wounded emotionally and in a sense that is good. For we are limping. And like Jacob wrestling with an angel who limps the rest of his life. It's a sign that we love when we love truly. And now they come and they go. And I My children have chosen. And I am saddened by the distance they live from me or will. And I have come to the conclusion that I am not afraid of dying. I am only afraid of leaving. And that's why Jesus sends the Comforter to bring all things to our remembrance. Whatever our Savior has said to us. And somehow, in some strange way, I believe the Spirit also nurtures the fathers and the mothers. Though they no longer see us, and one day we will also look like the morning fog dissipate. Though we are not here, we are a living presence in their lives because we were there and we are a part of.